This is the million dollar mistake that so many real estate agents, so many team leads miss out on. And it's that fortune is absolutely in the follow up. Hi, my name is Cody from Sheridan Street, and today I want to walk you through a framework I call Follow Up Fortune. And I'm really excited today to kind of walk you through exactly what top teams and top agents and producers are doing in the space in order to ensure that no lead falls through the cracks. Now, we've had the opportunity to work with some of the largest teams and see under the hood from some of the largest top producing teams and top producing agents across North America. And there's something that they do differently than most agents. When you sit down and you chat with a top producing agent, most of them will tell you that in order to actually drive real financial results in their business, they had to follow up. But the big question that so many agents are asking is like, what does sufficient and what does good follow up look like? And in today's video, I want to walk you through the follow up fortune today. There's something that I call follow up fortune. And when I'm, I'm sitting down and I'm coaching teams and you know putting together a framework for how we actually do great follow-up, there's two things that we have to remember. Number one, we have to remember what is our intention. And number two, we have to remember what are the tools that we're going to use in order to ultimately get what we're looking for which is more money here. That's ultimately what I'm trying to accomplish today. I'm trying to help you give you a roadmap if you're a team lead, you're a top producing agent. Like how do we like personally follow up with intention? How do we personally follow up with the right tools so that we can ultimately get what we want, which is more money? But before we get into the tactics, before we get into like what is it what does good follow up look like? Like, what does that cadence look like? I think it's a really important that we understand the intention. Like, what does good intention look like? And some of these things that I'm going to go through with you today might not be earth shattering, but it's a reminder that common sense isn't always common practice. And I want to give you a framework to think about how we do good follow up so we ultimately get what we want. We have more money. So the first thing I think about when I'm thinking about intention, I'm thinking about time block time in the calendar. So what does that mean practically? Like if you have a lot of white space on your calendar and there's nothing in the calendar where it specifically says, this is where I do my follow-up and these are the five things I need to do in order to follow up well, you're not going to follow a systematic process around time blocking. Time blocking to me for follow-up, I would say every day we need to dedicate at least one hour and that one hour, all we're going to do is we're just going to follow up with the leads that are in our pipeline. Now, you know, and that's what well, I'm saying. That's the very minimum. But like, what does time block time look like? You know, I do, I go to, you know, my CRM, I touch on my SOI, I touch on my leads, I touch on this and you want to have it broken down so that when you open it up in your calendar, you're like, okay, these are the five areas that I would go. And what I would do from a time block perspective, even more, is I would create a direct link to exactly where you need to go in order to follow up. So you open up your calendar, your calendar pops up, you have your one hour time block, and you essentially have these things written where it's like SOI. I want to be able to take, I want to be able to click a link and go directly to that link where it's going to take me to exactly where I need to go in order to follow up. The more intention that you set around your time block, the more process that you create around your time block, the faster you'll be able to go, the more conversations you'll be able to have and the better conversations you'll be able to have because you're going to be focused less on the admin and more on the process of doing. So the first thing around tension is time block time in your calendar. Now, the second thing around attention is like, are we actually leading with the servant's heart? Meaning like, like what are, like, what are we doing? Like what type of notes are we leaving? Like what's our intention? Are we trying to gather information so that we can actually help people? That's intention. Like your intention matters. Your intention going into prospecting time matters because your intention creates your thoughts and your thoughts create your actions. So like, I, I'm just going to start there where it's like d leading with a servant's heart where it's like, hey, I just want to serve the people in my database today. When you start there, I'm telling you magical things will happen. And the third thing I want to give you in regards to, you know, intention 
is once you have that servant's heart, when you follow up with that person, you're going to actually find articles that actually might help the person win. Articles to win. And it just allows you to think about things a little bit differently when you're doing your follow-up. Now, something you're probably asking is like, okay, that's great. I time block time on my calendar. I am leading with a servant's heart. I'm finding articles to help people win. What are the tools I use in order to actually make this a practical application? So number one, when we're doing follow-up, the first tool you need to learn how to use is Loom. Loom is one of the most powerful tools that you can use in your real estate business in order to drive real results. Because Loom essentially allows you to, as a, as a platform, allows you to just do a screen recording really quickly. Like say for example, you, like somebody's looking at 123 Sheridan Street, you can actually dig into why 123 Sheridan Street w will work so well for them. And you can actually just record a Loom video very similar to how I'm sharing a portion of my screen right now and you're seeing my my screen, like you're sh it's, it's, it's real. It, it makes them feel like you've actually reached out to them personally and they're more obliged in order to respond. So the first tool I would use is Loom. The second tool I would use is just very simple, is voice notes. If you, if you have found that this specific prospect has an iPhone and you have an iPhone, then I would highly encourage you to make sure that you use voice notes and you leverage voice notes as an opportunity in order to build a little bit more camaraderie, a little bit more of a relationship with the potential prospect. Because they, the cool thing about voice notes is even when you record a voice note and you send it, what ends up happening is they don't feel obliged that they have to respond with a voice note. They can respond with a text message. It's something super simple. But then they hear the emotion. They hear the tonality in your voice, and they're more likely to respond. The third tool that we need to have is we need to have some shape or some way of CRM automation. Now, what does this mean practically? CRM automation. So when we're looking at what the actual process, like we want to make this so simple for ourselves where we can actually set up, like when a new lead comes in, what I would recommend if you're running a team or if you're even you're solo, setting up some form of task that actually reminds you or the agent to do the thing. Like you have to spell out what good follow-up looks like. And I'm going to give you the step-by-step follow-up, what I think good follow-up looks like for the first five days. And then we have a call center that a lot of our clients use as well. So even if you're sending new leads from like a source, like I'm going to show you specifically if you decide to work with our call center or you decide to hire an ISA through us, this is like kind of the, the, step, the process that I recommend. This is a process that a lot of large teams implement. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like later on in the video. But having specific tasks where you're like, okay, lead comes in and these are the three things or these are the 12 things that need to happen over the next five days in order for us to see that this was a successful follow-up system. Now, why, why do I say we want to get to at least 12 touches? Because there's been a study that was recently done that said that we increase our contact rate by 70, by 80% rather, simply by following up at least 12 times. I'm going to show you what that actually looks like practically, but you have to understand the tools and the attention in order to actually set this up. But, you know, automating this process in some way, shape, or form, you know, if you're using a program like Follow Up Boss, it could be like a smart action. It could be, you know, notes or reminders. It, you know, you could even link in a platform like Zapier to send out emails and texts to kind of remind the person. You could create forms that connect to the leads. There's so many different ways in order to do this. You have to find the way that works best for you and your team, but having some systematic way that you say, okay, this is how I track follow up with this specific lead. And this is what success looks like. I'm going to show you what that looks like later, but that's another tool that you can use in order to drive real results and actually drive fortune in the follow up. And the third thing we're loving as of late, is assessments. So coming up with some, like this is why mortgage calculators, this is why so many different assessments and quizzes, like so whether it be an assessment or a quiz, 
people online love doing assessments or quizzes, and it's that it allows them to gather information in order to come up with an idea. And it could be a mortgage calculator for you. It could be you know a checklist of some sort. Like, are you ready to actually buy a home? Take our home buying assessment. Take our home buying quiz to figure out how close you are to actually buying a home. You can use a tool like JotForm, and you can actually just build these assessments out for them, use your buyer presentation, and then like create 10 to 15 questions that they actually answer, and then give them a score of how close they actually are in order to buy a home in today's market. Really simple. Assessments work really well. But let me walk you through what I feel like good five-day follow-up actually looks like in today's market. So on average, super, super important that with most lead sources, it's important to know that it's taking about 35 touches to get an appointment. Now, that's not true for every single lead source, but if you're running like PPC or you're running like, or like Facebook ads, that becomes pretty true. 35 touches in order to create like an actual sit down appointment because people now what they're doing is they're gathering information and then they're making decisions at a later date. So they're gathering as much information. So the more information, the more knowledge, the more content that you can drop into them, providing value to them on the front end, the higher likelihood that they're actually going to a book an appointment with you and then B when they're ready, the higher likelihood that they're actually going to reach out to you. So day one of follow-up, this is what I say. I say we should be doing a call and a voicemail. We should be sending them a text message and we can, should be sending them an email. That's pretty standard. Now, most of us kind of do this, somewhat do this. Some of us in the space, if we're honest with each other, we might be like, okay, we automate this and we send this as a text message. But if you have an agent that you're handing off leads to, you wanna have your automated sequences, but you also wanna make sure that your agents are reaching out manually. Your agents are actually following up with the lead. So having some sort of form that they fill out that actually attaches to all three of these things, if you're gonna send leads to your agents or if you're the only one taking leads, we gotta figure out on day one, how do we at least get one call in, one text in, and one email? But to be truthful, what I would do if I were you on day one is I would actually make your call and voicemail at least two to three times. We want to call them within two to three times within the first day. Now, fortunes in the follow-up, so that lead, we want to call within five minutes. But then we like further than that, we want to actually make sure that we're trying to reach them at least two to three times in the first day. So what does that look like practically? So we call them within the first five minutes and then we call them like, so say for example, Lee comes in the morning, we call them in the morning, we call them in the afternoon, we call them in the evening. Two to three touches in the first day via phone call, one voicemail, so this is only one time, and then two to three calls made within the first day. So if you're giving leads to your agents, if you're taking leads, you need to call them at least two to three times in the first day. That's day number one. Day number two can be a little bit more chill. Day number two, a call and a voicemail should be two times. Morning and evening on day number two. Email should be a manual email and this should be a text-based email from you. And if it's from an agent, you wanna send it directly from your email so that you know that you're getting in actually into the inbox. Because sometimes what can happen, and the reason why we say, say send a separate email on day one, sometimes the automated emails don't actually make it through and therefore you, like, you wanna figure out where is this client gonna communicate with us? Are they gonna communicate with us on email? Are they gonna communicate with us on call? Are they gonna communicate with us on voicemail? At the very least, and you can add a text in here if you want, but like at the very least, two calls, and at least one email directly from your email. If you want to get stealthy, you know, again, sending out a text here or doing some sort of, I, here I would do like a voice note. I would do a text voice note here, but at the very least it has to be an email and at least two calls. On day three, all we want to do is we want to take five minutes and we want to record a personal loom. Now what we're going to do in the personal loom, we're going to tackle a few things. So 
number one, we're going to tackle, you know, what they came in for. If it's a buyer and they were looking at, for example, one, two, three Sheridan street, what you're going to do is you're going to record a loom video and the backdrop is going to be the MLS. And you're just going to talk about one, two, three Sheridan street. And then what you're going to do intentionally is you're going to recommend two other properties. If you have their property address, if it's a seller, you're going to record a loom. You're going to just do a virtual CMA via loom. So what you're going to do is you're going to record a loom video saying, Hey, we got your information on one, two, three Sheridan street where you live. I see some other homes that have recently sold in the neighborhood. You know, it looks like right now your home on Zillow is, you know, priced at, you know, seven ninety nine. But based on comps, I, I would need to kind of come into the home to like do like to see exactly what you've done to see. Again, you want to seed the listing presentation. You want to seed the in-person CMA, but you just do a virtual CMA and you send that off as a personalized loom video on day three. So if it's seller, you're focused on virtual CMA. If it is a, if it's a buyer, you're going to do a virtual MLS and that's day three. This should take you no longer than five to 10 minutes to record. Day four, you're going to go back to the call and the voicemail, the text and the email. But oftentimes, if you do this, if you spend the five to 10 minutes, people will respond because you took the time out of your day in order to actually do something that no one else in the space is doing. Day number four, what you're going to do is you're going to do that. You're going to go back to two times here. You're going to go two texts here and you're going to go one X email. Very simple, very straightforward. And these are all just text-based emails. What you're going to do in the email is you're going to reference the loom because in the loom video, what you're going to do is like just coming back up here, you're going to send this as a text and you're going to send this as an email just like that. And then on day four, what you're going to do is you're going to reference the loom. So you're going to follow up via email via the loom, and then you're going to text them two times. One is about the loom. And it's like literally like a, you know, did you get my loom, my video? That's all you're going to say. Did you get my video? Question mark. And you're trying to try to call them. And then day five, again, you're going to, in the voicemail here, day four, you're going to reference the loom. And then on day five, what you're going to do is you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to email, you're going to voice note, and then you're going to call. And then you can literally just call them one time on day five. But th this essentially, what this does is when you actually add up all the touches that you're doing, the, the, the goal touch for every agent on your team and yourself is 12 touches in five days. We want at least 12 touches in five days. But remember, coming back to the very top, like we got to be intentional with what we're doing. Because if we're not intentional with what we're doing, that's a problem. So that's why we're switching up the angles that we're going in until we actually make contact. Now, if we make contact with the person, then like, again, now you follow your cadence of follow-up. Now, when we get to day five, this is what happens for a lot of agents is if you're running a team and you're working directly with Sheridan Street, if, if your agents do that for five days and they don't get response, send it to an ISA because most likely the agent's not going to follow up much longer than that. It, it's going to be a stretch to get agents to do this with every lead. This is why I'm more focused around like, you know, again, I'm more focused around quality over quantity. Meaning like, I want to know more information. So from like buyers, like I want to know in the ad, like how soon, like I want to, I don't want just name, email address and phone number. I want to know how soon they're going to buy. I want to know, you know, price range that they're considered in the ad. Cause I would much rather have a, you know, a $25 lead and do everything above versus a $5 lead and have to sift through that unless you have an ISA. But that's what I would say. I would say, you know, quality over quantity, unless you already have an ISA. And then with sellers, I want their name, their email address, their phone number. I want their property address. The property address is like probably the most important element because at least I can go right to the Loom video if I need to in order to do the follow-up. But after you go through the five days and after you send them back to the ISA, you can have your automated sequences. People do automated sequences and they're fine but I tend to prefer lifetime nurture. And I'm gonna show you why I li like lifetime nurture is because it's contextualized to you and it's contextualized to the, what's happening in the market today. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, walk you through three emails and I have a totally different video on like three emails and like when to send. 
If you want access to that, just email me at uh, Cody at SheridanStreet.io and I give you access to that training that it's called Email Marketing That Converts. I'm not going to go through that in this video, but there's three emails that everyone should send. This is something that I teach and something that my friend Sharon Servazza teaches. So the first email everyone should send is called Deal of the Week. And Deal of the Week should go out on Tuesdays. Because all we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to raise their hand. We're trying to give them a reason to raise their hand. If we have a bunch of buyers in our database, we just need to throw more deals and more properties at them so they raise their hand so we can have a conversation. So the deal of the week goes out on Tuesday. We have a video around that. But that goes out on Tuesday. On Thursdays, we send out a Loom video. And the Loom video is like kind of like a market update. And the reason we do it as a Loom video on Thursdays is because it puts you in front of, it puts your face in front of them. Like if we truly believe that we want to be intentional with our follow-up and if we truly believe that like all conversion happens in great conversations and that like this is a relationship-based business, we'll take the five to 10 minutes out of our week in order to record a Loom video so that people actually get to know us. Because there was a stat that was recently put, it out, put out that really staggered me. They said that, over 81% of people go to Google reviews and they go to some sort, they try to find some, they try to find some way where they can kind of fact check you, kind of see that, like, are you who you say you are? That's actually up 63% year over year. So this is why like them seeing you on camera matters so much. So like Thursday, we call it like kind of like our homeowner, home buyer, loom video. We talk the, we t walk them through what's happening in the market, the, the homes in the area that, you know, are good deals, homes in the area that are overpriced. Like we actually walk them through and I have, I have a entire training around that. The third thing that we do is on Saturdays, we use what we call story lesson offer. So this is a a story that we tell about something that's happened in the market. We created this entire GPT around this, but this is our Saturday email. And this is all contextualized to what's actually happened. It takes people behind the scenes so that it's not every email is like just this automated drip where, you know, they're probably getting the same information from you that they're getting from Joe down the street. That's why I love Lifetime Nurture because it's actually built a relationship. The Loom video is you. The deal of the week is you. The story lesson offer email that you write is you. It's a story about you. So for example, I give some of our clients a, an example around how one of the best things they can do is like take like one of our clients, Molly wrote a story about how she was in the grocery store the other day and how, you know, no one was actually using the self checkout, even though the self checkout was actually available. Everyone wanted to actually go and get service from a cashier. Like, and in certain markets, this might be true. Maybe you're, and then she tells a, you know, presents the lesson that even though automation is great. And even though self-service can be great for certain things, for other things, sometimes we want help. We want support. That's just who we are as human beings. And then the offer she made, she's like, Hey, if you're in the market to buy a home and you want, you know, you want somebody to guide you through the entire process. That's exactly what we're here for. She told an entire story, presented a lesson, and then she made her offer. Hey, if you want help with this process, feel free to reach out to me. We call that story loss and offer. The second thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your accounts are set up on IDX and e-alerts. This is very simple, but like I see this happen. Like it's very difficult to have an ISA and it's very difficult to, for you to like actually nurture leads. If you don't give them what they want, like what does a buyer want? A buyer wants a home and a Seller wants a buyer. So if you're targeting buyers in today's market, you need to have some form of e-alerts where you get notified where people are actually actively looking at properties. And maybe for you, the IDX is, maybe you are the ISA right now, but we need to essentially be doing like a courtesy call here. And we do this, we hire ISAs where we essentially do a courtesy call. Hey, Tom, I recently saw you were interested in 123 Sheridan Street. It looks like you, you know, you were interested in the property, two bed, three bath. Hey, I'm just giving you a quick call to see if like, you know, your, how your search is going and like whether or not like you're getting the right types of homes in your inbox that actually suit your needs. Like, are you, are, are the, 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 
homes you're getting actually good for you or should we update your search? Should we update your criteria? Are you still after houses? Or are you potentially looking for some condos? You wanna have some sort of sorting question. And this is in a sales-based video, but we talk about that inside of the Trust Report Influence Sales Method. But if we wanna do lifetime nurture well, we have to have a system. We have to have a process that actually allows us to get the overall result we're looking for. So coming back, you know, kind of coming back to this, Follow-up fortune requires intention and requires tools. Follow-up fortune requires you to get really strategic about your first five days of follow-up. And then follow-up doesn't end with a lead after you follow up for five days and then they get a hold of you. Then what you want to do is you either want to send them into an ISA so they can continue the follow-up or you want to install lifetime nurture in your business to make sure that like emails and videos are being sent to your database to be nurtured. And this is how you do it. If you want to learn a little bit more about how we actually help real estate agents follow up with fortune, just send me an email at Cody at Sheridan street.io or go to Sheridan street.io S H E R I D A N S T dot I O and you can learn a little bit more about our six step process and how we help actually help agents make more money and get more clients under contract. I hope you got a ton of value out of today. Hope you're able to take this follow up fortune, you're able to run with it so that you can drive more results for your real estate business in today's market. We'll see you in the next video.